Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Unity Serializer to add save game features to any project. We're going to use Angry Box as a demonstration here, and we're going to use the new version of Unity Serializer released on the 24th of June 2012, Unity Serializer version 0.7, which is the first one to include a wizard to help you set up the screen and everything else. So we're going to use that, so let's first of all install it, version 0.7. This is the information it's going to import, so we'll just do that. And we've got a couple of new folders in here. We've got a plugins folder that contains the serialization stuff and the editors for it. And we've got a Unity serializer folder that has a couple of useful scripts in it. Pause menu, a JavaScript example of doing a save game feature on a pause menu and a C-sharp script that just puts an on-screen menu for saving and loading. Right, firstly, what we'll do is we'll go and find the new Unity Serializer wizard, and we'll dock that wizard to the bottom of our inspector over here. Now, for every scene that Unity Serializer produces a save game for, you have to have a save game manager in that scene, and that pretty much stores everything that's in the level at the start, so that it can be found, moved, destroyed, whatever. And the easiest way to do that now is just by clicking Create a New Save Game Manager, which will create you a new object over here, uh, already configured the right way. And to that object, we're just going to add uh, our JavaScript pause menu so that we've got a way of loading and saving the game when we're playing it. Next, we need to decide what we're going to save in this game. So if we click on the player, we definitely want to save them. You can see the wizard is now showing us information about the player. It's saying we're not storing any information, and it's allowing us to add one of three scripts to that player. We can add a unique identifier, which would allow you to find it later on, but wouldn't store any information about where it was or any of its variables. We can add a store information script that allows us to actually store positions, all of the local variables, even complex classes will be stored. And because players are prefab, we could also add a prefab identifier. And you do that if you were generating these things at runtime, if you're making them up as the game played. But we're not doing that in Angry Box. Actually, because play is quite complicated, it's got lots of sub-elements. We're going to use this player plus children, and we're going to say just save everything about all of those. And you'll see in the hierarchy view, now we get an indication of what's been done to each item. If you don't like that, you can turn it off by clicking on the hierarchy markers checkbox over here. So we save the player. Now we'd probably like to save the enemies. There are lots of those uh, in here. But again, we can just use the same feature of the wizard. We just go enemies and all children store that information. And then the environment has some dyna dynamic elements. We'll store all of that. And it has some semi-static elements. And we'll store all of that. Okay, so all it remains to do now, in order to get our save game going, is to capture all of the objects which are in the scene at the start. And we've got a button on the wizard to help us do that. It'll run the game for five seconds, capture all the objects, come back here and then save the scene with the save game manager suitably updated. Okay, it's done that, the level's been saved, so what we're going to do now is we're going to delete all of any save games that might exist on our player to start with, and then we're going to actually go and run the game, but first of all I'm going to turn the audio off so that you can hear me speak. Okay, that done, we'll run the game. Okay, so we'll spin ourselves around, go over here, get ourselves into some trouble, and then we'll press P to start the pause menu. So we can just save the game now by clicking Save Game. And pause it, run around over here a bit, start shooting something, pause it, save the game. It's going to trigger this door so it opens over here as well. And pause the game, wander over there open the door, pause the game, save it, and then we'll go 
here for this corridor. And we'll go and activate the slider over here. Pause it. Save the game. Okay, so that should be enough. So now if we want to see loading the game, uh, let's just load ourselves back to that first position we were in. Lots of trouble there. And let's load ourselves back to the second position. This was just before we opened the door. third one, which is as we open the door. And the final one, which was inside the room. So this has saved everything, including all of the information about the objects, you can see everything's animating properly, uh, everything's working as we expect it to. And that's it, we've added load and save game features to, uh, to Angry Box, and just to prove that it still works when you reload it, we run the game, I'll just do that, so you can see it uh, popping back up and taking us anywhere we want to go. Unity Serializer will save all of your own properties, complex classes, collections of classes, as well as uh, a whole series of Unity built-in components. And of course, uh, there are add-ons for iTween and Playmaker available on the website. So you can save pretty much anything you need to save. There you go. A lot faster with the wizard.